Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Klaus and thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. It's gonna be a little bit different. As you can see on the screen, things are already different. This weird guy with the beard is on the screen. Here's why. And he's actually not that weird. He's amazing. His name is Gronk, the current leader of the Boston Tea Party. And he's here with me now in a Skype session. As you can see, the, the Skype symbol in the top right hand corner of the screen. And we wanted to uh, give you guys a little bit of history, a little bit of a, a, a news broadcast, if you will, and also the the guidelines for entering my and his our clan, the Boston Tea Party. So uh, Gronk, the leader, has been he's a founder. Is that is that right, buddy? I am a founder. Yep, I started the clan with about twelve or thirteen other of us in total. So, yep, one of the founding members. One of the founding members, and he's still with. How long have you been in the clan, man? Uh, so we started it last August, uh, and even before that, we were playing together in another clan um, for about a year together. And at some point, the other clan that we were in, which was called Boston, um, they kind of went the way of being a little bit more casual and less war oriented. And the group of us that were more war oriented and wanted to do better in clan wars and stuff like that, were just you know had enough, and we decided that we'd break off and and do our own thing and start our own clan and that way we could you know own it and have the leadership of it and and make the decisions that we wanted to make as opposed to being held under the thumb of somebody else i understand that so you you literally started your clan about a month after i started playing the game so that's a that's a funny fun fact and then of course y'all been playing for an extra year on top of that so y'all that, that that's why i'm always asking you for help man i mean that's why i'm always like gronk I don't know how to queen walk or whatever, you know, I think I've come a long way, but I still have a long way to go. That's why I'm glad I'm man. around you. <laughs> right on, man. So y'all were a part of the other clan. Y'all decided y'all needed to get out of there and do something else a little more serious, a little more competitive. I'm assuming right. it'd be more yep. fun if it was competitive. Yeah, and exactly. Go from there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, it, it kind of, it was something that BBP, so Boston Beer Party is the other uh, main influencer of this whole new clan of ours. He and I were talking offline um, through a chat app that we were using back in that clan. And, you know, I just kind of spitballed that idea out to him like, hey, we're not happy here. We were both co-leaders at the time and we weren't getting any assistance from anybody. The, the leader of the last clan just kind of like up and left us and put us in a bad situation. And we didn't have the control to actually make any decisions. Um, we wanted to implement things and every time we tried to other people there were a couple of other co-leaders that would you know block us uh with a, every move that we tried to make and then the leader would come in infrequently and and veto everything that we had done before so uh i just kind of you know threw the idea out to him like hey why don't you and i start our own clan and see how many of the good people that uh are here that know how to war and put up three-star attacks can you know, want to come over with us and, and try something different. And that's kind of how Boston Tea Party was born. It was, and that's kind of where the, the name of the clan came about. You know, we were, we overthrew England, so to speak. And, uh, you know, th this was our, our way of rebelling against the, the old clan and, and just going off and doing our own thing. Breaking out of the old ways and into the new. That is, that is really awesome. So, uh, could you do me a favor? Cause I honestly, I've been in the clan for what, like four months or more. Maybe. I don't know. And, I, don't and know. I still don't know who the founders were. So if you could tell me right now, I'll try not to forget. OK, uh, it's gonna I know be like hard. four of them. <laughs> I'm not looking at my screen or, or the game right now, so I can't see who's in the clan. And actually, some of the founders have left and gone off to other places. But um, so if, if I remember correctly, it was me, Boston Beer Party, uh, Red Robot, Utsev. I hope I'm pronouncing that one right. I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Farley, Weak Feet. Uh, B Jack, Bardley, uh, AWOL, who's actually now over in WHF, um, and Bardley and B Jack are in one of the clans with uh, Clash with Ash. So, you know, some of our guys spread out and, and went to some other YouTubers out there. And um, i trying to think, did I miss anyone? I'm sure I'm missing somebody. So I apologize to all the other founding members that uh, I left out of that list, but, you know kind of hard when it's on the fly and you're getting questions thrown at you. Yeah, well, you know, I, I wanted a genuine re response from you, man. I wanted to give you a, a challenge. I wanted to give you, I don't know, I just wanted it to be real. So I, I did not tell him anything, guys. This is a Skype session. First time we've met face to face, sort of. And uh, 
So he, this is all off the top of his head, pretty much. I've got a list of questions for him. Don't tell him. But anyway, so that's cool, man. So you have a founding founding group of 12, you said 13 or so. Yep. And uh, so, so my question to you is, how, how did some of those members get into those prestigious clans? I mean, like WHF is pretty up there, you know, and Clash with Ashes too. So, so how did that happen? So actually a lot of um, the people that have gone back out to those types of clans. So AW, as we call him, uh, he was always kind of like a floater in the best way possible. AW, I love you very much. You taught me so much. You were the one that taught me how to hog. So I can't badmouth you, but uh, he would go around and go to like um, the North remembers and stuff like that. And he would pick up all the, these three star war strategies. And then once he felt like comfortable with everything that he had picked up, he would come back to Boston and teach me and, and Boston beer party, like how to implement them. And that's how we, we learned how to three stars, uh, through that guy. And mm. I feel like there was a stint where he was with, um, WHF and one hive, uh, back in the day. And so, I mean, this is, this is his gig. He kind of, he's, a. Uh, a mercenary for hire, so to speak. He, he goes around to these war clans and, and picks up all the cool stuff. And then he comes back to us because he knows that, you know, Boston Tea Party is his home and and he teaches us all the, the cool tricks that he's learned. And uh, same with Bardley and, and B-Jack. They were, they've been in clans with um, Clash with Ash before too. So they have their ends there. They I think they went back and just reconnected with some old people and, you know, they're off doing their own thing, but I'm sure, you know, they always come back at the end of the day. So right sure on. they'll come back soon yeah yeah cool man well you know it's it's just interesting knowing that some of the products of the boston tea party have now expanded into the youtube elite uh clans i mean not not like lost phoenix where everybody's in legends league but more like the the more competitive town hall nine war clans right uh, town hall 10 war clans where where there's actually fun happening and not just trophy pushing so that's that's really cool knowing that the boston tea party has produced that out of y'all's group that y'all have that y'all have made. You have some people whose personality leads them to float around, as you as you said. I didn't say that. Yeah, um, I did say that. <laughs> well, but you have all other people like Boston who who seemed uh, like I mean he's been leader since I started, and then mm -hmm. he uh, recently left, and some stuff happened, which we'll talk about later. And then now okay. you're the leader. So uh, tell me about Boston. I mean, was he the original guy that wanted to do it, and that's why he ended up with the leadership role, or did he just fit the bill, or how how'd that work? Um, I mean, when we came over. It it was either going to be he or I that, that took leader at that point. And, um, I was kind of burnt out from being co-leader at the last clan that we were in. So I just wanted to take more of a backseat role, uh, when we came over to begin with. So he took leader to begin with. Um, but honestly, like the way that we've always founded the clan and in terms of like how we run the clan and leadership, it's always been a council. So like, yeah, there's a person that's a leader, but it's only because you have to have a leader in the game. If we didn't have to have a leader, we wouldn't have one because at the end of the day, we have uh, our leadership council, basically. And um, we talk about any decision that we want to make together. We bring it to vote. We don't there's no one person that actually has full authority to say, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, we want to make sure that everyone has equal say as to the direction of the clan uh, and, and the decisions that we make for the clan. Mm, I see. I see. Has there ever been a moment when that had happened? Is there, has there ever been a moment when the leadership disagreed and then Boston had to pull, pull rank? Um, not that I can think of, because, I mean, we're very like minded. We all wanted to come out here and, and do our own thing and be, you know, an actual war clan and uh, that we all have the same mentality. So I don't think that there's there are some of us that don't see like eye to eye necessarily on every single decision, but at the end of the day, you know, we give it a shot. If it doesn't work, then we can always reverse it. Um, but, but I don't know that we've ever had a time where one person had to just like put their foot down and say, Hey, we're doing this. And that's that. Right on, man. Well, uh, it's just interesting hearing about the history of Boston tea party, you know, uh, uh an, an offshoot, a, uh, a, what is it? The main fl the Mayflower of sorts from the Boston clan to to a new clan, the new world, starting a war clan with a really good war log. I mean, historically, from the beginning to now, you guys have won 90 yeah. percent of your wars, if not more. So it's really impressive. The war log is actually public for those of you that are watching. If you want to go check it out, it's pretty awesome. And the one loss, the most recent loss you'll see is ridiculous. And that is the product of the next topic. So uh, BTP, it was the uh, 
actually, you know what, Gronk, you tell us, like, tell us from your perspective, because I've they've heard me talk about it before. What the heck happened? All right. So we are part of the UWA, which is an alliance of I think it's like five or six clans. And what we do is we run things like scrimmages and we'll team up to do wars against other people, like arranged wars and stuff like that. Um, so what had happened is that we had all gone off for a scrimmage, um, an inter, uh, alliance scrimmage. And at the time the, the leader passed off the, the leader position to F1. And honestly, we'd been playing with F1 for, you know, the two years that we've all been playing together. So, you know, you, you figure you can trust that kind of person. Um, and no one really thought anything of it. So we went off to scrimmage, did our thing, came back, um, Strangely enough, F1 never passed back leadership to the previous leader, which was Bjack at the at the time, and you know it, he just took it, and no one really said anything. Like honestly, he was he was managing the clan, and it was fine, and it was nice to have. He was very level headed at the end of the day, um, so he, it was a nice like neutral um, person that was in the leadership position at the time, but then. I don't know what happened. Something snapped, but he he decided to. So we we use Discord um, as a chat app for out of game communications, um, and we have a, a leadership chat in there where we talk to each other as as uh, leaders and co leaders of the clan. And he just came to us one day and he's like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna start letting in rush town hall ten bases because I want to raise the level of the clan." And we're like, "That's not cool, dude. We don't want that. Uh, they can't pull their weight in war. We've done it in the past, and it's really a detriment to the clan. It's not gonna help anything." Mm-hmm. Uh, then the other thing he did was he said that he was gonna start rotating the co-leaders out uh which has never been a decision that any one person makes so scared me honestly i'm the weakest co-leader attacking so i was like no 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 <laughs> don't do it <laughs> so the, so he came to us with that and then he demoted bbp to elder uh off the cuff you know we had talked in the past he he said that he had wanted to you know kind of take a backseat type of thing and and spend more time with his family and we totally get that like we respect that he's a uh, he's done a ton for the clan and he's got a he's got a wife and and kids to to you know be with and raise as well so we were totally cool with that but the way that he went about it was just that he didn't talk to any of the leaders and he's just like i'm gonna demote bvp and we saw it in clan and we were just like what the heck is going on man you're just like doing whatever you want and so we we confronted him and Boston Beer Party was like, look, man, I don't like the way that you're running the clan right now. You've had it for the leadership role for two or three months. You took it to begin with. It wasn't yours to, to start with. Um, I want to get Gronk to take leadership of the clan and, and have him steer the ship. And he flat out refused. And things got ugly. I won't lie. We, uh, we kind of put him on blast in our, in our chat app. And we showed all, we aired our dirty laundry to everybody in the clan and showed them what kind of leader F1 actually was. Um, we gave him ultimatums. We're like, look, dude, if you're not going to pass it, uh, we'll just get everybody to, to, you know, opt out of war, which we totally did. There was one point where we had, I think what, 34 people opted out of war. And the only person opted in was F1, Mm -hmm. um, Boston strong guys. We, we rallied around the, the co-leads and the, the rightful owners of the clan and, you know, put the screws to F1 and, and, you know, we all go to bed that night. The next morning we wake up, I'm out of the clan. Boston's out of the clan. Uh, so he just went on a kick spree and kicked all the co-leaders and demoted everyone from their position to just regular members. And then he sat on the clan. And that's when, uh, you know, we kind of rallied the troops there. You you went on your social media crusade, got some help from the the great fans of your channel. And I'm, I, I love that you guys rallied around us and... And uh, yes. help, helped all of us out to get our clan back. But uh, yeah, so we don't know what actually happened. At the end of the day, F1 ended up leaving the clan. Um, he passed leadership off to weak feet in the middle of the night. We're not sure what's going on. The last time we saw his base, it was destroyed. Uh, his collectors were full. We have a sneaking suspicion that he might have been uh, subject to the ban hammer. We don't know if Supercell had a, a little bit of influence on this uh, recent set of events. But, you know, we, we have the clan back. Uh, we all came back after. So we were in a, another clan hanging out, which is Dominator, which is one of uh, B-Jack and Barley's 
pass clans and they were nice enough to shelter all of us refugees while we were clanless for a while. We did a war with them. And then, uh, yeah, we got, we got the clan back and, you know, now I'm leader. So that was that. And on that note, apologies to Dominator for probably my worst attack in war ever. Just wanted to mention that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so honestly, I, I, we don't have an official reason for why F1 would give the clan back. I mean, he, he took over the clan. The leader role is all powerful. I mean, I had some communication with uh, Supercell and they basically said, there's nothing we can do for you. And uh, and then I, I, I contacted several big names on, in the YouTube community, because that's really all the big names of Clash I know. And uh, next thing I know, F1 is out. Weak Feet has the leadership. I don't know if Supercell had anything to do with it or not. The only right. thing I do know is that we had over 100 people comment in that video saying free Boston Beer Party. D uh, Boston Tea Party. Beer Party's <laughs> fine. B uh, tea Party wasn't. So free Boston Tea Party, like over 100 people. And then when uh, BTP Strong came out, when we got the client back, we had another 100 people comment that. So that, that was really cool, considering... Uh, the average video, I get, I get like maybe 25, 30 comments. So yep. that was pretty awesome. That was really cool. That, that for sure is, has to have been a factor. I mean, if, if you were F1 personally, you would probably be thinking, wow, I just made some enemies and lots of them. So I, yeah. I, I hope, honestly, I, I hope F1 was like one of the theories I had was F1's phone was stolen, but that's a good one that is not likely because of the way he was writing to Boston beer party. Right. That's you true. Know. We saw the chats. We, everyone in our clan saw the chats. Uh, he was, he was not going to give up that clan anyway at any time. And the fact that he actually did it, you know, it, it makes me feel like there's an outside factor in this whole thing that, that caused that to happen. Yeah. But it has to be, I mean, that's, that, that's the only thing I can come up with. So the only thing I know for sure is mm -hmm. the fans had a factor. That's the only thing we really know is that for sure. BTP strong, free Boston Tea Party, all those were were a big factor. Hashtags, you know. Yep. And uh the fact that F1 has gave up the, the clan and then went offline. You guys have to understand, F1 was a beast. Every mm -hmm. day. He had like twenty thousand troop donations at the end of last season. Like this guy was a beast. And he had two accounts. So right. he he was like constantly playing this game. I mean, he was on there all the time. So the fact that he went offline for more than, you know, five days straight is weird. I mean, that's like totally contrary of uh, the that, usual F1. That's the thing that we, we, or that's the thing that makes us think that there was a ban involved because of the fact that he had two town hall 10 accounts. Um, and he was on there constantly. And like you said, he had 20,000 troop donations like every single season. So that guy is on there all the time playing the game. And then just to go, you I mean, if you play Clash of Clans, you can't quit this game cold turkey. F1 kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. And, you know, looking at his base, the guy had two Town Hall 10 accounts. He was super active in our clan. He was giving, you know, close to, you know, 20,000 troops every season for donations. And then to see his base just be like completely dead, broken walls, broken buildings, collectors full. We're like, yeah, we, we think that there's some outside factor here that might have caused him to go offline for that amount of time. And, you know, whether that be a you know a temporary ban or a full time ban for what he did, the guy had it coming to him and I don't feel bad for him. And I appreciate all the support that we got from your your fans, Klaus, you know, having them stop by and give us the the hashtag of BTP strong. That was awesome to see throughout the day. And then, yeah, no, it was it was fantastic. I thought, you know, the the videos that you put out for the whole situation were awesome. And just to see how all of your fans rallied behind us was, you know, very touching. I have the best fans in the world. I have to admit that. Um, special shout out, probably just, just, just a feeling. Okay. I know we made contact with Clash with Ash. Yep. And I don't know what, if he did anything or not, but I know he liked tweets and he responded to tweets. So I know mm -hmm. that much. And I know that we know somebody that knows him more personally. So I don't know if he had something to do with it. Also, special shout out to Power Band Gaming for the same reason. Yeah. Um, and then Wicked Gaming was actually pretty involved, too, based uh, one of my fans knows him, I think. So um, he was kind of involved, too. And I, I don't know how many subs, subs he has, like 40, 50,000 or something. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So three special um, shout outs to those guys. But shout out to everybody, really, for being just super supportive and like you said, stopping by the clan and, and really just encouraging us and helping us out. And then we got the clan back. 
Got Weak feet back. handed handed leadership back to to BBP. I wasn't worried about it when Weak feet had it. I just kind of just wanted everything to be normal, you know. <laughs> so Weak, right. if you see this, it had nothing to do with you. I just needed to see normalcy, you know. So uh, and um, uh, BBP got it, gave it to you, and now we won our first war, and we're probably about to win our second. So I, I think we're in for a good winning spree or winning streak, yep. uh, based on the rekindling of BTP Strong, which is now laying in the uh clan description so uh tell me about that tell me about the future of this clan now that you've got leadership now that everything's back to normal and we got some solid recruits man i mean t tell me about the recruits uh yeah so i mean i think direction we've always been war oriented so that's not going to change we want to i think at this point though we definitely want to progress the overall level of the clan so i think what that really means is Town Hall 8 and below, we don't really want in the clan. Um, there's a couple of us that have Town Hall 8 minis that we'll throw in there if we need numbers for war. But at the end of the day, um, Town Hall 8 is really not a challenge. And we'd like to focus on Town Hall 9s and above. So we've got a lot of people that we're developing and grooming to be three-star attackers. Um, so what we're really looking for right now in the Town Hall 9 realm is people that have at least a combined hero level of 25. So whether that's like a uh, level 10 uh, Barbarian King and a level 15 Archer Queen or however you want to get there, 25 is kind of like that magic number that we're looking for. Um, but in addition to that, we we take a look at a lot of other things. And I know you've mentioned this before, but like lab upgrades, you know, so which troops that you, you've upgraded um, and then your overall defenses, like so war weight is a big thing for us and i i don't know how many of your subs know what war weight is or the theory of it, it of it is but it's basically a calculation that supercell does um that's based off of your overall defensive and offensive levels and when matching other clans uh it it tries to match you with like um like opponents based off of that war weight. So what really throws it off though, are things like if you max your expos to level three and you're still running around with level like town hall seven walls and town hall eight defenses, that's not good because what you're matched up against is probably something that you can't put a three-star attack up on. Um, so those are the, the types of things that we're looking for is, you know, something that's progressed their base at a pace that's really good uh, and evenly done. So they're not like, too defensively heavy or too off. I mean, offensively heavy is fine. I, that's more of like the 0.5 route. And we're cool with that. You know, if someone who doesn't want to drop expos, but then they've got 2020 heroes. That's fantastic. We've got a, a guy in our clan right now, Eric, who is going that route and it's solid. And honestly, I, at the end of the month, I'm probably going to town hall 10. So I'm going to go 9.5 to be honest. Woo! You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Grunk's going down all ten. That is sweet. That is that's cool. Uh, so so, um, continue elaborating on that though, because I feel like I understand the basics of that. Like what mm -hmm. we're looking for. I always look at like the Valkyrie levels in the in the clan, or the the laboratory and the walls and the hero levels. But I mean, there's got to be more to it because sometimes y'all reject people. I would I would have accepted. So give me. Uh, give us a good outline. I'm going to put bullets next to this for okay. any Town Hall 9 that wants to join the clan, what they have to have. Yeah, so I mean, either level 4 Golems or level 2 Lava Hounds. I mean, you need to have that tanking troop to be able to actually put down uh, a 3-star attack. Those are like the, the foundations of the 3-star attacks. You need to have like that tank troop that that can you know soak up some hits. And if you have neglected to, to actually level those, you, there's a good chance that your attacks are going to fail. Um, I mean, the current meta of the game, Valks are very strong. So we definitely look for people that have higher level Valks, three, four, um, depending on like what your expo situation is and where your hero levels are. You know, we can get away with someone with level three Valks if they've got, you know, 15, 15 heroes or something like that. Hmm. Um, and then, I don't know, it's kind of like... War stars we don't really care about it doesn't mean anything because you could have gotten a ton of war stars at Town Hall 7, Town Hall 8, where it's very easy to get them. I mean, I think if you look at my mini, I've got 400 war stars and I'm a Town Hall 8. So it's not that hard to accumulate them. They're, they're not really a good measure of, of what a person is in the clan. Um, we also take a look at things like Gold Grab and Elixir Escapade or whatever it, it is, the, those um, – achievements in the game they kind of tell a lot about the player because if you don't have those maxed out 
what that really means is that you've been gemming stuff and that means you're kind of like rushing through the game which is not a bad thing but if you're not learning the basics at each of the town hall levels uh mm-hmm. those are kind of like the foundation points that you need to to build upon for each level that you go up in the game uh so like i know you and i we both did a lot of hog attacks at town hall eight and you and i both do a lot of hog attacks at town hall nine and i feel like if i didn't learn hogs uh, and get away from dragons and stuff like that at town hall eight uh i wouldn't have those foundation uh, pieces there in place to be able to put down a three-star attack hmm. um but so that's kind of like what we're looking for in terms of the the troops situation and the defensive situation that's not all we're looking for though we definitely are a more mature clan there's a lot of us that are you know in our 20s and 30s and whatnot and we try to keep the the clan age level at a reasonable uh place so 16 is kind of like the lowest age that we're looking for in the clan uh we've had bad luck in the past with people younger than that so trying to stay away from from anyone under the age of 16. the other thing is is we're uh primarily located on the east coast so we start wars at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, um, trying to keep people within like the Pacific to Eastern time zones, just so that way the, the people can get their attacks in on a timely manner and stuff like that when we do a war. Um, we're, a li- we're kind of expanding that. We're, we've let in a couple of people from Europe as of late. Um, Honestly, like if you come in and you're not from the U.S., that's fine uh, as long as you're getting your attacks in in a reasonable time. The biggest problem that we've had in the past is like the way that we like to run wars is we like to have the bottom half of our lineup attack early in the war and get both of their attacks in. So that way the people up at the top of the list know what is left for cleanup and then we can just decide, you know, where do we start to dip to pick up the easy stars and figure out what the situation is of the war overall to, to kind of make sure that we get that win and mm-hmm. we're not just wasting attacks. And so if you're holding on to your attack and you're a town hall eight or a bottom town hall nine, that doesn't help anyone because the, if we don't have to dip down that low with a, a top town hall nine attack to pick up the easy stars down there, we prefer not to. Um, it's so yeah, wise, it's just a wise decision to, to hold your your best attacker, your top base, just in case you know the the, the war is tipping the balance, and you know right. he could cheat down and take a three star from a town of eight, or he could attack another town of nine and risk not getting that three. You know, it's right. it's just a wise decision to start and and work your way up in the uh, in the war. Right. We definitely take a bottom up approach for for clearing town halls in war. So we want to make sure that everything, the easier bases are cleared first. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, fresh hit triples are fantastic from anyone that can can do them. Good job, Klaus. Uh, first one. <laughs> obviously, if we have, you know, if there's a two star out there, that's fine because it gives us a lot of intel on the base and then we can make tweaks to the original attack. So that's another big thing is like we need people that understand three star strategies, whether that be, you know, go Vaho or go Laloon or, um, you know, a bowler walk plus a queen walk and whatever else you want to throw out there. You know, we want you to know that kind of stuff. Stay away from things like go wipe. We are very anti go wipe here. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a fundamental attack. I will give it that. Like you learn the basics, you can learn your golem spread. You can learn your funneling from it. But at the end of the day, it usually doesn't have the power to get all the way through a high level base. So you need to like start supplementing it with things like hogs or loons or something like that to maybe make it a three star attack. But I mean, Pekka's are very susceptible to Tesla's and they just get roasted really quickly. And then you're wasting what it's 25 or 20 troop space on a, on a Pekka and it goes away in, in an instant once it gets to a Tesla farm. So I, I would rather somebody ditch the Pekka's altogether and bring some hogs and, and just hog a base after they've, you know, trip some double great or double giant bombs and and go from there. Mm-hmm. So no go wipe, no go wipe. We look for Valkyries, Golems, Lava Hounds, some sort of specialty. Because I've noticed certain players like air attacks. Like Eric seems to like air attacks, so he's upgraded his Lava Hounds, but he's also got his Golems up. So you, you're looking for at least one tanky troop that's max. You're looking for Valkyries that aren't level one. Right. If you're a Town Hall 9, you need at least level 2 Valkyries, and we recommend level 3 or 4. I mean, especially since, like you said, the meta of the game is saying Valkyries. Well, I mean, that, if, you're a town, 
if you're a Town Hall 9 and you don't have at least level 2, that means you didn't max out at Town Hall 8. So that's another big thing. Is like We like to max out at our at our Town Hall levels. I'm almost a max Town Hall 9. I've got three more levels on my, my king. I've got maybe like 18 more walls to do and I think one... Uh, What's the oh a barrack that that just got upgraded with the the last patch? So oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, so so if somebody has all those requirements, they yep. they're the right age, you know, they they can handle the time change, or they live in the the western side of the world, and they've got you know up higher walls, higher heroes, their their labs are upgraded. Then then what? They get accepted, and then and, and then. then what? And then it's phase two of the interview process. So yeah. that's when we that's when we ask our questions like, um, you know, how old you are, where do you live? That way we can figure out, you know, are you do you meet those other requirements that we have? The the third thing that we ask is that all of our clan members download Discord, which is a, a chat app that we use. If you're not familiar with it, it's it's similar to things like Kick or WhatsApp or whatever. You can chat with other people outside of it, outside of the game, and it's very beneficial just for the fact that. Um, the chat within the game goes away after a while. So if you say something there and it's important, it'll go away after like a hundred posts in the, in the game. So that's why we use an outside chat app. But for those of you that have gamed in the past, uh, if you've ever used anything like Ventrilo or something like that, it's got a voice chat feature, which is super cool. Like we've, uh, we've sat in on, uh, not, not in on attacks, but we've gone through attack strategies with somebody like broken down a base that like, you know, you should deploy your golems here. You should start your funnel here. Uh, there's potential double great bombs here. You know, things like that. Like it's really efficient um, to break down a base with somebody over chat versus text. Because what we had been doing in the past is we would uh, take a screenshot of the base and then use another app called Sketch, which is allows you to like basically mock up um, the picture that you have taken. And we're like, all right, so if this black arrow represents a golem this blue dot represents a wizard and just kind of like walk somebody through a picture and it there's a lot that gets lost in translation so it's a lot easier to just talk things through with people plus it's super organized like we've got what eight channels there eight chat channels in there and i think we've got an announcements channel where we post our uh our clash collar link every war um we've got uh, a couple of channels where we post anti three bases and we've got uh, a channel where we post YouTube videos for like three star strategy attacks and, and basics and stuff like that. So that way there's like uh, a repository of information for people that need to like brush up on certain things and it's all right there. That way you don't have to go back to YouTube and, and search for the video that might've been posted eight months ago or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is people don't have to be amazing to join the clan. Because you're you're gonna help them. That's that's what you're saying. That's 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 where I fall in fall into the category, right? Yeah, I mean, we would like you to know how to attack. It, we have it's tough. So we're in a position where we do have a good amount of people that are in that transition phase where they're they're getting they have the fundamentals down of the attack and they're just fine tuning it to get to that three star level. Um, so. It, I think at this point, what we're probably looking for is people that can already do the three-star attacks on their own. Uh, and then once we get those people up to up to par or up to snuff, whatever you want to say, uh, where we need them, then we're definitely, you know, looking for more projects to to groom and and bring up through the ranks. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get at. So we've we, uh, clearly the, you have the elite attackers, and then you have the play, people who are trying to learn, and then you have the people that don't try to learn. And those people get kicked usually pretty quickly. They don't last very long in Boston Tea Party. So if uh, if you're trying to get into the clan, guys, and you meet that requirement, if you meet all these requirements that are over here, over there, uh, then tr just do it. But first, you need to have some familiarity with these three tar three star attacks that Gronk has outlined for us. So if you can get in there, you can get a high percent two star. You're likely going to be kept around because all you need is that little tweak. Trust me, one stupid poison spell dropped wrong is going to ruin the attack or one wall breaker gets blown up by that freaking mortar and or that wizard tower and it's over you know so it, it really is it, it's a it's a it's right there one little thing and you can change your entire attack so we're looking for people to have the fundamentals they have the high enough level stuff uh, uh valkyries especially i've noticed a lot of low level valkyries people upgrade your valkyries okay but uh <laughs> It, it, it it's it's easy it's not easy but it is doable to get into the boston tea party and uh you know I, as i've said as i said in the stream i think like four or five times 
Uh, so if you didn't see my stream, the link is in the description below for my twitch.tv channel. Uh, but I said in the stream that uh, we, we, I wish we could accept everybody. I really do. I wish we could have like a mega 1000 member clan. But at the end of the day, we only have 50 slots and we are craving to be a really high level clan, elite war clan. So we have to be very selective about uh, who we do let in the clan. And like Gronk said earlier, we're not accepting tunnel eights or lower. So if you are a tunnel eight, you're not going to get accepted no matter what. I'm I'm sorry. You know, that's just that's just how it is. But we talked about Town Hall 9s like crazy. I do know some Town Hall 10s. So uh, Gronk quickly lay out our Town Hall 10 and 11 requirements. And then uh, we can wrap it up and, and mention whatever you think we need to okay. mention. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, Town Hall 10 and 11, honestly, we don't have many. Uh, we've got one Town Hall 10 that's been with us for a while now, and he's very solid. Um, mm -hmm. But what we're really looking for is, again, combined hero levels for Town Hall 10 of at least 40. So 2020 or 3010. I don't know if you went that route, but if you did, sure, that'll work too. But uh, yeah, we want you to have at least the hero levels there because... Town Hall 10 attacks definitely rely a lot on the heroes. They take out a large portion of the base. So if your heroes are low, you're not going to be able to to get that you know high percentage two star or the three star. Um, and again, you know we we look at your lab upgrades. So if you're a Town Hall 10, you you're running around with level one golems. There's no shot that you're getting into the clan. So you know it's it's all about uh, it's just like a Town Hall nine, making sure that your offensive levels are at the you know where they need to be for town hall 10 and you're not out there with like level three infernos with town hall eight walls or something like that because that's not gonna again war weight is a huge factor and infernos contribute to war weight in a big way just like expos do at town hall nine so uh those are the types of things that we're looking there uh at town hall 10 town hall 11 uh, this one's a kind of a mystery to us. We don't really have any. We we just let in one in the past couple of days, so this is our first town hall eleven in the clan. But you know, t uh, combined heroes of, I think what sixty is that what we have? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have sixty. Yeah, so town hall eleven, the the combined heroes of sixty is what we're looking for. Um, does that include the the grand warden? Yes, it does. Okay, so. I think what max level on Grand Warden is 20. So it's, it could be 20, 20, 20. It could be 30, 30, 10. Um, there's a lot of extra firepower in defenses at Town Hall 11 with that Eagle artillery. So, you know, if you're running around with baby heroes or teenage heroes, it's not going to help anybody in our clan. So, yeah, you know, again, heroes are a big thing for us. We want you to work on getting those up. Um, and then, yeah, troop upgrades again. You're, we're not going to let somebody with a level one golem or a level one hound into the clan. And, you know, level one Valk's probably not going to happen either. It just shows that you don't, you didn't dedicate the time or the effort to, at each of the town hall levels to raise your troops um, to be able to put up those three star attacks. Mm -hmm. So I, I came up with a hashtag while you were talking because I think it, it, it encompasses everything that we are not looking for. Okay. Are you ready for this? It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be life changing, and it's gonna be, it's gonna show up on the screen as soon as I say it. Is it okay. hashtag fancy pants from yesterday at the stream? <laughs> fancy pants. I don't know why I kept, I was stuck on fancy for some reason. Fancy funnel actually sounds it's fun to say, but anyway, <laughs> hashtag no rushed bases. Yes, that is that is hashtag that is hashtag no rush bases. Hashtag no rush bases. We got three big hashtags. Well, at least two really good hashtags now. So <laughs> hashtag no rush bases. We don't accept rush bases. We don't ex accept gemmers that don't didn't learn from their experiences. I mean, Town Hall 6, healers. You know, Town Hall 7, dragons and, and hogs a little bit. Town Hall 8, hogs. Town Hall 9, everything. I mean, it's everything, like yeah. everything builds on itself. Because whenever you first start with Town Hall 6, you start learning how to prioritize certain defenses. I remember that. I remember thinking air defense. Watch the air defense for the healers. Yes. And right. then Town Hall 7, you start learning funneling. And then Town Hall 8, you start learning uh, trap locating and, and stuff like that. Prioritizing, you know, the heroes are certain. It's just amazing how the game is designed. It, it adds up to itself. So at, at Town Hall 9, all that stuff comes into play. And uh, you definitely need to have the experience of every Town Hall. So if you did rush, you didn't get that experience. So hashtag no rushed bases. Big bold letters right on the screen. Bam. Fact. <laughs> so for the the clan requirements you know the 25 levels for the heroes is a tunnel 9 uh, 40 for 10 60 for 11 do you yep. foresee that 
progressing with the clan do you, do you see that going up to where we're not going to accept anybody but max level heroes eventually or or whatever i mean do you see that happening that progression yeah i mean i, I don't know how quickly it's going to happen but i don't see that it ever would go down from where it's at right now um so if anything it might be what like level 30 combined heroes in the future or level 40 uh, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to progress the the clan as a whole and get stronger bases in here and, and help us out in war. So, um, you know, the only way to do that is to start making our, our requirements a little bit more strict and, and up in the levels of uh, the types of heroes and troops that we're looking for. Very good. That makes sense. Uh, you know, I, I expected that, actually. And uh, I just wanted that to be said that, you know, we we're probably never going to digress we're going to progress with with right. all of our requirements and so if if you are a, f a follower of the clan a follower of the channel and you don't meet the requirements just yet as i've said before guys just keep grinding grind the dark elixir that's the probably the main thing get those heroes up get those valkyries and golems up in the laboratory keep working on it keep progressing keep enjoying the game play with your clan or another clan or whatever until you finally meet the requirements then try it's not going to hurt and the quicker you do that the better because if we do raise the requirements that's going to be one more journey for you. So uh, grind fast and, and you know, sell some lemonade on in a lemon stand and, and buy some gems and get it done. You know, whatever you need to do. Uh, so just understand that we won't be accepting any bases that we don't see meet the requirements and the requirements will never, I believe, go down. Right. Definitely not. And uh, to your point on gems. Just make sure you're gemming the time and not the resources, because that's the uh, that's the thing that you want to do if you're going to gem anything. Yeah, <laughs> I've gemmed resources once on in a video just because I didn't make it, and I was like, oh, four thousand gems for twenty thousand dark elixir. Ah, yeah, it was it, awful. It, the conversion rate is so terrible on the on that type of uh, gem purchase. So bad, it's so bad. Anyway, Gronk, dude, it's been awesome. Yeah, seriously, man, it's been great talking to you. It's uh, I mean. Now you see my face like we've talked before on Discord. So you've, you've heard my voice, but now you've got a face to go along with it. But well, really cool to be to do a video with you. Totally. It was good to uh, finally meet you, you know, and uh, to uh, put a face to the voice. I, I already knew from the voice that I'd like you. So I like you more now. And uh, man, I just want to thank you for for coming out and being involved and, uh, and, 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 and lending your leader, your leader status and showing us what's up for the Boston Tea Party. And I'm sure all the fans will enjoy watching this and uh, that we'll be able to hopefully teach some things, uh, entertain some people. And if anybody's serious about joining Boston Tea Party, they will follow along the uh, bullet points and uh, hopefully join the clan eventually. Yeah, I mean, I think this was a, a good video to put together. I know you've got a lot of fans and a lot of subs that come by and you know this will help them out a lot so that way they know what we're looking for and you know, they don't get heartbroken that we rejected them for <laughs> applying. I mean, if, like you said, if we could, we would love to have as many of you guys in here with us. But at the end of the day, we're, we got 50 spots and we're trying to move the clan in a certain direction. So trying to, trying to do that one day at a time and figured this is a, a good way to help you guys out as well. All right, guys. Well, you have heard it from the best of the best. Boston Tea Party's very own leader, Gronk. He has been a founder, a leader, a starter. He's helped me with many attack, and he's probably bound to help me for many, many more for the for the foreseeable future. Because uh, I don't seem to be able to catch on to that queen walk not dying thing. But uh, guys, we just wanted to thank you guys for tuning in. But I want to thank Gronk specifically for showing up and looking purdy as always, and just being a beast. And we're so grateful. Look at that beard, guys! It's amazing. And uh, special shout out to BBP for being the the leader of this whole thing. Uh, you just got roped into it, buddy. We know it. We know you didn't really want to do it, but you did a great job. And uh, we will always think of you as leader. And uh, for all the other founders, special shout out to you guys for uh, really getting this thing in motion and really, really setting this thing off. And and all the other members of BTP. I mean, I feel like the clan is definitely going in the right direction. The new recruits have been promising. And uh, for those of you that want to join in the future, uh, we would love to have you. Just make sure you meet the requirements. It's uh, it's definitely possible and it's totally worth it. It actually makes the game easier. Mm -hmm. It makes the game easier, I promise, if you don't rush your base. So um, that's it for us today, guys. Love each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in. Like this video if you liked it. And if you want more information, I'd like to get Boston Beer Party on this Skype thing and see how he, you know, what he's got going on. I don't know if he would do it, but if he would, that'd be sweet. And Put that um, out there to him. I know, right? And subscribe, guys. Subscribe if you haven't joined the Klaus family. 
We would love to have you. It's growing bigger and better each and every day. And I have to admit, it's blowing my mind. So I love y'all. I thank y'all. Gronk, say bye. We love you. And uh, we'll see you again very soon. Adios, guys. I mean, honestly, embarrassing story. I started off with like a, a chin beard, like Chad Kroger from Nickelback. And yeah, that was like my, my thing when I first started growing facial hair. And then, uh,